Hi, this is Dr. Mora. In this video, we're going to be creating an interim crown for our ACC number nine prep that we did in the previous video using an integrity bisacryl material. The first thing to ensure is that we have a well-fitting putty, and the first step for that is to trim off as much excess of putty as we can. I typically like to cut the putty at the midpoint of each adjacent tooth to the temporary that we're making, and that way it is easier to seat the putty since you can simply align the edges of the putty with the midpoint of each adjacent tooth rather than searching for where the putty inserts on the typodont. Trimming the putty to include minimal teeth should provide plenty of stability and minimal distortion for your temporary. And remove any gingival excess of the putty. This will allow for passive seating and also trimming the putty as short as possible will allow the excess material to bead at the edges to be easily removed rather than creating a thin film over the teeth and the gingiva. Let's seat our putty to ensure it's well fitting, and we can inspect the fit of the putty from both sides with the mirror to ensure that the putty is well adapted without having to put pressure to distort it with our fingers. A thin layer of Vaseline is applied to the prep as well as the adjacent teeth and the gingiva so that the temporary material doesn't stick. It is not necessary to apply any Vaseline to the inside of our putty. Here we can also examine how our putty will line up. As I said, because it is cut on the midpoints of the adjacent teeth, we know where it will be placed mesiodistally. We can go ahead and fill our putty with integrity material. Just make sure not to remove the tip and that will avoid introducing any bubbles. The tip stays in the material the entire time and you can use the tip to spread the material up to the edges of the putty. As we seat our putty, we can see that because it is well fitting and well trimmed, the excess material beads on the outside rather than spreading across all of the teeth. And that actually provides us with a useful tool to evaluate how set our material is. I typically do not set any timer for it because the setting time will vary with temperature, but you can use a explorer to evaluate how hard the material is. Once the material is hard but still flexible, you can remove the putty by flexing the putty open, and that way the temporary will stay on the preparation and not be lifted up with the putty. To remove the temporary, I place a cotton roll over the incisal edge and grasp over that with a hemostat. This way, the hemostat will not scratch or crush the temporary as long as you do not use too much excessive force. And with a buccal lingual rocking motion, I'm able to remove the temporary easily. I'll immediately mark my interproximal contacts with a mechanical pencil. That way, I know to avoid those spots. And as long as I don't remove that pencil, my interproximal contacts will not be changed. I will additionally mark the margin as best as I can with the mechanical pencil. Because it's a very acute angle, you won't actually get to mark the exact margin, so keep that in mind, but I do find that this helps for a little bit of added visibility. I remove the gross excess of temporary material, which is in the embrasure spaces, with a straight-edged e-cutter burr. I would not recommend using any e-cutter to refine the details of your margin as it is a very aggressive burr and you can end up over trimming, which I do do in this video, uh, but we'll show you how to correct for that. I'm also not afraid to touch up the contacts just a little bit with this burr because I have marked them with a pencil. So I can just smooth out the area around them and as long as I don't remove all of the pencil, I know I will not lose my contact. The same way that we evaluate our finish line from the occlusal, we can evaluate the width of our margin on the inside of the temporary. And we can angle the e-cutter so that as you remove material, the excess flakes off rather than trimming it all manually. Simply thin the excess areas until they flake off. Again here, removing a gross excess in the embrasure space. And here is a good example of thinning the edge until it is easy to flake off. Finally, we can evaluate to see the evenness of our marginal area. It should be as even as your finish line on your prep is. Here we can see those beads of excess material that I mentioned. Because our putty was well fitting and well trimmed, they're easy to clean up. We'll try on our temporary and after ensuring complete seating, we will check the margins with an explorer and visually. Palatal looks good initially. Buckle as well. Let's check the margins with an explorer. Mesial looks okay. Checking the distal, we do note a deficiency. We'll go ahead and remove our temporary to adjust any excess or deficiency in the same manner. 
Here we don't want to use force, just gentle buckle lingual motion until the temporary comes off in one piece. We know that the distal aspect had a deficiency, but here I'm also looking at the internal deficiencies, these bubbles. Here, when we rotate the tooth, we can actually see the deficiency on the distal side that we've made. And additionally, the bubbles on the internal surface here and here. These can be corrected easily by applying a flowable material. We want to minimize the excess of material as much as possible. Here I remove the excess with the tip of the composite gun itself. And I'm going to add more flowable to the deficient area on the distal. I want this flowable to overlap with the margin slightly so that when we seed it, it will flow over the margin and create another internal marginal line. And we'll seed it before curing it uh, so that we're basically relining the crown. We'll go ahead and cure it on the distal and the mesial and remove the temporary once again to adjust. In this case, the flowable resin actually does bond slightly to the tooth, so just be patient and move buccal lingually. It might be advisable to add another thin layer of Vaseline before doing any relining with flowable. Upon inspection, the internal bubbles are completely gone, and we can see we do have a little bit more excess now on the distal, where we previously had a deficiency. I'm going to refine this with a medium grit polishing tip. Looking across the surface, we can see that excess and remove it gently. Polishing tools are ideal for small marginal adjustments. Here I identify a small amount of flash on another area, and we can just smooth that off with the same tip. Even with a gentle tool such as a polishing tip, we want to approach it in the same way, angulating it so that we are not touching the intaglio surface whatsoever, and we just thin off the excess material until it is gone. We'll check our margins once again with an explorer and visually, and here we can see we're much happier with both the mesial and the distal. Now, looking from another angle, we'll see that there is actually a slight surplus of material where we added the flowable, so we'll go ahead and remove the temporary and continue to adjust that. Here we can visually see that there is overbulked material, and so I'm just going to remove that until it matches the contour of the rest of the temporary. Upon reseeding, there is no longer any tactile or visible excess on the distal, and I am satisfied with the seating of that crown now. We'll go ahead and check the palatal for any deficiencies in the same manner, and we can adjust anything as needed. Moving on to polishing, we'll begin with our goat hair brush at a slow speed of approximately 5,000 RPM. Checking visually, we can immediately see that it improves the surface finish, but that there are still some slight bumps and deficiencies uh, that we don't want to see in the final crown. We'll go ahead and go over every surface of the crown with this wheel before moving on to our final polisher. If this wheel leaves black marks on your teeth, the speed is probably too high. To achieve the final luster I'm looking for, I'm gonna be using this felt buffing wheel with a small amount of acroluster applied. You only need a very small amount of acroluster, just run the wheel over the acroluster block for a couple seconds, and then begin working on the crown. Angle the wheel to use the edges to get into the secondary anatomy on the facial surface, that way there won't be any bumpiness there, and go ahead and work over the entire surface of the crown. Here we can see the beginnings of a mirror finish on our temporary crown. In this video, the wheel is being run between speeds of 3 and 8,000 RPM. Feel free to experiment with that. And here we'll see our final shine on the crown. We'll go ahead and seat the crown for a final time to check the margins, and we would be ready to cement. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions.